Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, I'm going to work a few practice problems demonstrating molar mass conversions. Now, if you haven't yet watched our lesson on the molar mass, I suggest watching that before attempting these. You may also want to jump over to GetChemistryHelp.com, where you can print out a PDF worksheet of all of the problems I'm going to work, so you can follow along and work them with me. So the first question says, what is the mass in grams of 51.2 moles? So we're converting from moles into mass. So whenever you go from moles to mass, we use the molar mass. Well, the first thing we have to find is what is the molar mass of trichlorine nona fluoride? Well, these prefixes tri and nona tell me that it's a molecular compound. So as we saw in our lesson on molecular compounds, trichlorine means three chlorines, nona fluoride means nine fluorines. So I need to find the molar mass of this. So I'm going to add up three chlorines and nine fluorines. So we got three chlorines. Well, let's find chlorine on the periodic table. Oh, it's right over here, 35.45. So that's the mass of chlorine. Then we have nine fluorines. So fluorine's right above chlorine, 19.00. So 9 times 19.00. So I work that out. So 3 chlorines is a total of 106.35. 9 fluorines is a total of 171.00. And just a quick little reminder on significant digits. When we're doing molar masses, however many decimals the original mass had, we just give that number to the total. So Chlorine had two decimals, so when we add up all the chlorines, we'll give it two decimals. Fluorine had two decimals, so we add up all the fluorines, we'll give it two decimals. Okay, so add these together, and the total mass of trichlorine known of fluoride comes out to be 277.35. And again, that's grams per mole. That's the mass of a mole. Okay, well, molar mass, again, lets us convert between mass and moles back and forth. So we're going to use this as our conversion factor to get us from 51.2 moles into grams, the mass. So 51.2 moles of trichlorine nona fluoride. So we're going to use the molar mass we just found and that was 277.35 grams per mole. So grams per one mole of trichlorine nona fluoride. So moles cancels. Punch that in your calculator and I got 14,200.32 grams, which obviously seems like a lot of significant digits. So how many should we have? Well, the original number only had three significant digits or sig figs. The molar mass had five. So our answer can only have the fewest, three. So I need to round this off to show three. So I could write 14,200, but it's always better if possible to get rid of placeholder zeros. So I'll just write that in scientific notation as 1.42 times 10 to the fourth grams. So there you go. That's the mass in grams of 51.2 moles of trichlorine nona fluoride. Now our next calculation asks, what is the mass in grams of 3.00 moles of magnesium chloride? Okay, well magnesium is a metal. Chlorite is a polyatomic, so this must be an ionic compound. So we learned in our lesson on naming ionic compounds that magnesium chloride, I would write that Mg and then ClO2 taken twice. Okay, let's find the molar mass of this. So we got one magnesium. How many chlorines do I have? Well, I got two chlorites because of this. So remember the parentheses, we have to multiply everything in there by this subscript outside. So I got two times chlorine. How many oxygens? Well, there's two oxygens in every chlorite, but I have two chlorites. So two times two oxygens, so four oxygens. So let's find the mass. So magnesium has a mass of 24.31. So one times 24.31. Two chlorines. Every chlorine is 35.45. So 35.45. And four oxygens. 
Uh, oxygen is right here at 16.00, so four times 16.00. So my total magnesiums are 24.31. My total chlorines are 70.91. My total oxygens are 64.00. Add those all together, and I get a grand total of 159.21 grams per mole of magnesium chloride. So again, this converts between grams and moles, which is what I want. I want to go from moles into grams. So we can use that. So 3.00 moles of magnesium chloride. And the conversion factor we just solved for is the molar mass. So 159.21 grams per mole of magnesium chloride. So moles will cancel. So we got three sig figs here, five sig figs here. So the answer should have three sig figs. So 477.63 grams is what I got. So if we're gonna just keep the first three sig figs, I'd round that off to 478 grams. Or you could write it in scientific notation as 4.78 times 10 to the second grams. Either way, technically, it would be correct. Okay, number three. How many moles are in 189 grams of calcium hypoarsenite? So we're trying to turn grams mass into moles. So again, moles to mass or mass to moles, we use our friend here, molar mass. So calcium, that's a metal. Hypoarsenite, that's a polyatomic, must be an ionic compound. So I can figure that up. So calcium is two plus. Hypoarsenite is ASO2, three negative. Do my little crossover rule. So calcium hypoarsenite would be Ca3 and then ASO2 taken twice. So how many calciums do I have? Well, I have three calciums right here. How many arsenics? Remember, multiply everything inside the parentheses by the number outside, so two arsenics. How many oxygens? Well, two times two oxygens, so four oxygens. So let's find calcium. So three calciums. Calcium has a mass of 40.08. Two arsenics. Arsenic has a mass of 74.92. And four oxygens. Oxygen has a mass of 16.00. So we add those all up. So three calciums comes to a total of 120.24. Two arsenics comes to a total of 149. 0.84 and four oxygens would be 64.00. Add those all together and the molar mass of calcium arsenite is 334.08 grams per mole. So again, we can convert between grams and mole using this. So our question says how many moles are in 189 grams? Okay, well we just found the molar mass, that's our conversion factor, and it was 334.08 grams per mole. So remember, any conversion factor can always be flipped. We can write this as 334.08 grams per mole, but I could also write it as one mole over 334.08 grams. And that's the way that I need to write it, because I need grams to cancel, so this grams has to go on the bottom. So 334.08 grams is a mole of calcium hypoarsenite. So grams cancels. Three sig figs divided by five sig figs. My answer should have three sig figs, and I got 0 0.566 moles of calcium hypoarsenite. Okay, one last problem. How many moles are in 0 0.0395 grams 
of cobalt-6 permanganate. So I want to turn this mass into moles. So again, we need molar mass. So let's figure out the formula of cobalt-6 permanganate. Well, this is an ionic compound because we got a metal and a polyatomic. So cobalt-6 would be cobalt-6+. plus. Permanganate is just one of the polyatomics you have to memorize. It's MnO4 negative. So if I do the crossover rule, I'm going to get cobalt, parenthesis, MnO4, parenthesis, 6. Okay, well let's find the molar mass. So I have 1 cobalt, so 1 times the molar mass of cobalt. I have 6 manganese, so 6 times manganese. And I have 6 times 4 oxygens, so 24 oxygens. So 1 times the mass of cobalt, cobalt's right here, 58.93. 6 times the mass of manganese, that's right here, 54.94. And 24 times the mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. So let's add those all up. So 1 cobalt is 58.93. 6 manganese gives me 329.64. 24 oxygens, that's 384.00. So add those all together, and the molar mass of cobalt 6 permanganate comes out to be 772.57 grams per every mole. Okay, well let's use that to convert 0 0.0395 grams into moles. Again, we're starting with grams, so we have grams over moles for the molar mass. So we had 772.57 grams per mole for the molar mass. So I gotta put the grams on the bottom so it'll cancel. So 772.57 grams and now the moles goes on top, one mole, cobalt-6, permanganate. So grams cancels. This has three significant figures. This has five significant figures. So our answer should only have three. So I got 5.11 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of cobalt-6 permanganate. Well there you have it. I hope you enjoyed these practice problems on molar mass conversions. As always be sure and click below on the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new lessons are posted and we will see you next time back here at getchemistryhelp.com. Thank you.